Years ago in Cub Scouts, middle of summer, our troop plans a week-long canoe trip. On the day of the trip, our leader gets called away for some family emergency and can't come. Our sub-leaders decide it would be best if we hire a local guide to help us. They find a local hunter who knows the river that we want to go down, and he obliges. First few days are fine, and he's really nice. One evening, we make it to an islet. The shore has rocks and branches strewn all over. Further up where the woods begin, there are odd branches almost arranged in what looks to be almost structured. Guide is a bit uneasy as he's never really seen something like this before. Spent evenings setting up and making a fire and playing games. Just before sunset, from the woods, we hear a terrifying screech. Almost like a howling, but more guttural. Guide grabs his rifle and tells us to put out the fire. The sound is heard again, but this time much closer. Guide tells us to get the canoes ready just in case. He wanders into the woods and silence. We all stand there on the shore trying not to be too freaked out. Suddenly, there's another screech and a gunshot is heard. The leaders guide us onto the canoe and stand in the water, ready to cast off. We hear another shot. Another screech this time, more sustained. Guide comes running out of the woods and onto our boat. He yells, We can't stay here. Go, go, go! We cast off and go into the water. By this time, it's dusk, and too dark to see if anything is on the shore. Paddle for another hour till we find a place much further down the river. Nothing really happened later in the days following, but we were definitely spooked. This is northern Ontario, and I have some family there. Years later, when I went for a visit, I recanted this story to some people, and some weren't surprised. The guide in question while experienced, was only 27 at the time, and didn't know the woods as well as some of the older, more senior guys. And a lot of them have stories of run-ins with whatever these were. Being watched in cabins, rocks thrown from seemingly nowhere. Sometimes, dogs mutilated after chasing these things. A lot of indigenous people tend to agree that it's probably Sasquatch, and that it's true that they can be really territorial. Some people may laugh at this notion of an ape in the woods of Canada and elsewhere, but I'm telling you my experience, and the experience of plenty others, that there is something weird in those woods. I'm a proud father of two boys. Oldest one recently turned 14. It's time I should take him hunting. We've been going out shooting almost every weekend. I'm sure he's ready for his first deer. He's excited. Go to bed early. Wake up early, grab a couple cups of coffee, let the boy have a soda, get our gear and out we go. Drive to a remote location I've scouted out before. Sunlight burning off the morning mist. God, I love it out there. Tell him to stay close and mind his steps. Gotta be somewhat quiet. After about a quarter mile hike into the woods, I hear something. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I stop and listen. The sound stops as well. Did you hear something, Dad? He's beaming, thinking there's a buck close by. Not sure. Sounded like something heavy. Stay close. My words made him worry a little, but we're still focused on getting him that deer. Continue on our hike, carefully surveying the surrounding. I hear it again. Crunch, crunch, crunch. It's matching our stride. Turn around quick enough to see someone dip behind a tree. I pull the rifle off my shoulder. Who's there? I'm assuming it might be another hunter, but I'm cautious. A man's head peeks out behind the tree and pulls back real quick. Just barely caught a glimpse of his scraggly hair. My boy responds. Who is it? Does someone else know about your favorite spot, Dad? He's still timid at his age. Probably. Might be a homeless man, though. There could be a camp around here with a few more of them. My boy is definitely calmer than I am. Not knowing how dangerous a man or a group of people can be when you're alone in the woods. I'm now more worried about my kid's safety than getting his first kill. 
We should head back. This made him upset, but he seemed to understand. Oh. Alright, I guess. He definitely had some attitude, though. Too much like his mom. We walked in loop back to the car to avoid any contact with a stranger. As we're nearing the road, I hear the crunching steps again. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Then, a loud thud. I give a quick peek over my shoulder, not stopping to look. There's the head of the man I saw, lying on the forest floor next to a tree. My heart sinks into my stomach. I rush my boy along quicker. Come on, we have to get back to the car right now. I grabbed him by the back of his neck, literally pushing him as fast as I can through the trees. Ow, you're hurting me. I was in full panic mode. I didn't mean to hurt or startle him, but I didn't want him to turn around either. We make it to car, and I quickly turn around. Rifle in my hand, my eyes are darting around the tree line. As if, at any moment, whatever killed that man and used his head like a puppet would jump out. I toss the keys to my boy. Unlock the car and start it. He's now visibly frightened at how I'm reacting. Car fires up, and I hop in as quickly as I humanly could. Put the car in reverse, and I hear my boy jump. Dad! Dad, look! It's the man! My eyes lift up to the tree line. There's that man's head peeking out behind a tree. An arm extends out from behind it. He's waving. It's not natural movement. It's flopping around like somebody's holding it. Nope the fuck out of there. Drive home doing 80 miles per hour the entire way. I'm sweating with fear. My boy sounds like he's having a panic attack. It's alright son. We're long gone now. His eyes are wide open, glued to the road. I felt horrible for him. We made it home, and I phoned the police. Told them everything. They searched the area and found nothing. Just some trash left behind by campers. No matter what they tell me, no matter how many years have passed, I will never return to those woods again. All right, X. Let me give you a story about something freaky that happened in the woods on a farm about five years ago. I was a 17-year-old farm boy. Our place was about a mile from our nearest neighborhood and 10 miles from the nearest town. My parents had taken a trip with my aunt to Vegas for a week and left me to run the place with the dogs. There had always been some weird stuff going on around the farm. Animals going missing, animals turning up torn up, weird tracks, etc., Dad and Grandpa always told me it was coyotes, but after I had gotten a bit older and they told me that there had also been sightings of bobcats and mountain lions back in the area for the first time in over 50 years, but the DNR boys would never admit to it, even with trail cam footage of them. I had been taking nightly walks for a couple of years, but never further than the big lamplight would show. One night I start walking and go away from the farm in the light, it was a full moon and there was a fresh snow on the ground. Everything was clear for miles and you could see it like it was almost daylight. And something possessed my dumb self to go out there in the middle of winter by myself. My dogs would usually come with me on little walks like this, but they were nowhere to be found. I figured they were out hunting little rodents or something, so I left without them. I walked the path along our empty cornfields and down the path that led to our pasture. It was about a quarter of a mile downhill walk. Down in this pasture, there was a canyon and a creek that runs through the whole thing, from our end of the property all the way to the next county. Inside of this, there is a pretty sizable forest with huge old trees all the way down. It was one of those places that was perfect to grow up near. I spent a lot of time down there throughout my life and never really had anything out of the ordinary happen. I had my headphones in and was listening to some hammerfall just enjoying how cool everything was and how lit up everything seemed even past the tree line. I figured me being just over six foot tall and an overly cocky weightlifter, I didn't have anything to worry about out there. So, stupid me went down next to the creek bed in the middle of winter, alone and unarmed. Mistake number one. I followed the creek for quite a ways until I ended up at a part of the bed where the banks and walls of this little canyon were too angled to climb up, and there weren't any paths out. 
I stopped for a little bit and watched the moon and stars, just admiring it all. Don't think I'll ever forget how pretty everything was. About that time, I ended up turning my music off just to take it all in. I guess it wasn't cold enough for the creek to freeze all the way, and every little sound out there in this place just echoed on top of the little sounds of the running water. The whole place just made every one of my senses feel exaggerated. I stood there for about a minute or two when I started to get this horrible feeling in the pit of my gut, like the most terrible thing in the world was going to happen at any second. I looked around a bit, didn't want to freak myself out over nothing so I gave it a short time. That was mistake number two, I should have just walked out of there. And at this point I started to hear something moving through the snow and brush on the other side of the creek. I'm pretty sure if it had been any other time or place I wouldn't have noticed it. It was so quiet besides that little trickle of water, and I started to look around and spotted a little bit of brush moving a few yards from the side of the creek bed. The only sounds were those exaggeratedly amped up steps causing the thin coat of ice to crack and snap along the long grass near the shore. I won't lie, every horror story and terrible thing I've ever heard was running through my head, and I ended up just being stuck there, unable to move away while this thing continued to creep out along the bank. I hadn't even seen it, and suddenly I just had the worst fear I'd ever had in my life to this day. Finally, this thing came out, and by God, I almost soiled myself. This big black dog-looking thing came crawling out near the creek on all fours. It was so big, I didn't know how in God's name it had moved so quietly. It kept walking along in the open before it stuck its muzzle down in the creek and started to drink. I just stood there, glued to the spot. The whole place seemed to get darker with every second. About this time, I felt the cold for the first time that night while this chill ran down my spine. Stupid me shivered. Mistake number three. I had big copper buttons on my coat and a couple of them brushed against each other. It had to be such an insignificant sound, but down there, it seemed like it hit, hit a tin roof with a hammer. This thing perked its ears up and raised its head to look at me. God. Its eyes. I've never seen anything that green before. We stared each other down for a few moments and then this thing growled. At this point I finally snapped out of it and began to back away, trying to get back out of this boxed in space and away from this thing. And this thing started to bare its teeth and growl more aggressively. And then I kid you not, it stood up on its hind legs a bit, raising its front paws up to its sides. Only they weren't paws. They were like hands. I thought it was going crazy or something, but I kept slowly backing off, every step getting a little closer to the path leading out of the canyon and creek. But even then, I still had a long way back to the house. This thing just kept washing me like it wanted me to just back away and leave for the first few steps. Then it started walking along the other side of the creek, matching my pace just slowly stalking me as I was making fat dookies and breathing heavily but somehow managed not to lose my head and run. I think if I had done that, I wouldn't have made it out. Finally, I made it to the open area, just had to get up this little hill then make it across the pasture. Then it was only a quarter of a mile up another hill to home. I didn't turn my back on this thing and continued to back my way out and up the hill. This thing didn't seem to want to cross over the creek from the position it was at, but it kept walking. About the time I made it to the top and was looking down at this dogman thing, it had made it to a more shallow spot down at the creek bed and began to cross. At this point, I knew I had to pick up the pace. I finally turned and began to quickly walk to the pasture gate as quickly as I could. I scrambled over the gate and looked back again. It was at the top on all fours again, still watching me with those eyes and teeth. All that was between me and this thing was a barbed wire fence, a panel gate, and 20 yards. That's when I heard the best sounds I've ever heard in my life. Loud padding coming across the field. All three of my dogs were coming full speed down the hill, going insane. I looked back and this thing turned and stalked back down in the smaller hill. I figured I was in the clear and took off like a freaking rocket. I ran a quarter of a mile in nearly four inches of snow and winter gear. I passed my dogs on the way up, 
and they didn't stop or turn to meet me. They just bolted down the way after this thing. What felt like an hour of running up this hill, I made it back to my home and almost passed out on the floor. I locked the doors and ran to grab something to defend myself. I figured that my hunting knives weren't going to cut it, so I went to the gun safe. Only guns in the house are my great-granddad's old double-barrel 20-gauge, a 22, and an old pump-action Remington 30-06 with a box of 40-year-old ammo that had a horrible jamming problem. I grabbed the shotgun and loaded two shells before shoving a couple of fistfuls into my pockets. I just sat there in the kitchen with a death grip on this gun for hours before I finally heard my dogs barking outside the house. I looked out the window under the porch and saw all three of them without a scratch. I dropped down onto my butt and cried like a baby, not sure what to think. I didn't want to go out there again, and I didn't until the next morning. I stumbled out the door with the gun and looked around. My boys came up panting with their tails wagging and I loved on them and petted them until my body was numb from the cold. I made sure that they got some hot meat that night as a thank you. I've seen this thing a few more times than this, but this was the first time. The only people who know about this are a couple of my closest friends, and it's a heck of a story. I don't live on the farm anymore at the moment, but that thing turned what was my little retreat into a nightmare. Be me, eight years old. Grandpa took me and my older brother camping somewhere near Sedona, Arizona. Rented a cabin, sitting on the porch one night, listening to my grandpa tell us bullshit stories about killing Nazis. Later find out my grandpa spent the war in San Diego, working on ships for the Navy, and never saw combat. Suddenly, see some white shape moving around the tree line. I have bad eyesight and was supposed to be wearing glasses, but never did. Grandpa takes us inside. He grabs his rifle from the closet, tells us to lock the door and go to sleep. He goes outside. Peek out window, see Grandpa sitting on the porch with his rifle across his lap. Can't see anything by the trees. Lay in bed and try to sleep. About an hour later, peek outside. Grandpa's gone. Freak the fuck out. Wake up, brother. He's ten. Tell him. He says we should get, quote-unquote, weapons from the tool chest. I grab a hammer. He grabs a screwdriver. Hide under blankets, clasping our weapons. An hour passes. Hear something moving on porch. Work up courage to peek. See Grandpa sitting back where he was before. Go to sleep. Wake up in the morning. Grandpa tells us to never talk about what we saw. Be in the woods with six friends. Exploring the 300 acres of my friend's grandparents' property. There's a ravine and a cave system. Friend and I decide to check it out. Friend has FAO, and I have my PTR. Get maybe 50 yards in the cave and start hearing shit. Like a weird moan slash growling. It's hard to describe. Quietly start shitting pants. Press on. Make it 25 more yards. Hear what sounds like heavy bare feet slapping on stone. We freeze. Something big is coming at us. Light fucking dies. Friend doesn't have one. Can make out a silhouette. A big one. Shitting pants even harder now. Heart pounding. Start shooting in the direction of it. Friend joins in. Stop shooting to assess the situation. Pained howl slash screaming. It starts coming closer at an even faster pace. Start scrambling out of cave. Firing and running. Get out of cave and jump on quad. Nope all the way back to camp. Tell everyone else. No one believed us. That night, we heard a loud screaming slash howl. Finally believe us. Everyone on high alert all night in sleep shifts. Friend wakes everyone up. Said he heard something in the trees. Something big. Everyone up the rest of the night. Howling screams throughout the night. Sometimes maybe 20 yards from camp. Next morning... Kay friend and I go up to his grandparents' house at the other end of the property. Tell his fud grandpa what happened. He doesn't say anything and just hands us a box. It's full of dynamite. He nods and we what hard. Ask what he wants us to do. Blow it the fuck up, you retards. Seriously? 
nods again. We head back to camp. Tell friends the plan. No one likes it. But we gotta do it. Head to cave entrance. Shittily set up dynamite at all three of the entrances. Start hearing the moaning slash growling. Friend and I repeat the events of yesterday. Trying to get it close to the entrance. Had friend outside light the fuse five minutes after entering the cave. Ten minute fuse time. See it and immediately start shooting. And running from it. Stopping every 20 yards to shoot back at it. It's howling loud enough to hurt my ears through ear protection. Managed to get out of cave in time. Big fucking bang. Cave entrances collapse. Get hit in the back of the head with a flying rock. And knocked unconscious. Wake up 20 minutes later back at camp. Go to ER two hours away to get checked out. Just a slight concussion. Doctor asked what happened. Uh, I fell. Go back to campsite after I'm discharged. Spend the next few days in peace. Grandpa wouldn't tell us anything about it. He died last year and took it to his grave. My friend's grandmother disappeared 15 years ago in the woods up there. Be me, 17. Go on a backpacking trip over the summer through a school program. Me and like 10 other kids. In Mount Skokomish Wilderness with a ranger and an intern. Me and like 10 other kids in Mount Skokomish Wilderness with a ranger and an intern. The ranger was a 60 year old man, really quiet and kind of grouchy. The intern was some college girl pursuing a job like him. Hiking camp for about four days, not much happens. Occasionally catch the ranger checking out some of the girls at the camp. Don't think much of it. He only ever talks to the intern. About midway through the whole thing, we all smell terrible, but we're getting used to it. Late one night, really windy, I have my flashlight and go to take a dump in the woods. Go to latrine on my way back when I smell something fucking nasty. Like I said, we were used to the smell of B.O., and this definitely wasn't B.O., Start following the smell in the dark, tripping over logs and shit. Don't intend to go very far. Pass a tree and the ranger is just standing still beside me, like a statue. Says, pretty warm out, huh? Just sort of stand there. He goes walking back to the campsite and says the latrine is on the other direction. The smell is still fucking awful, so I pretend to walk over there, but once he's gone, I go back and follow the smell. It gets really bad. It smells like really sour shit and vomit. Follow it, gagging, until I come across a little clear patch of ground. The intern is totally naked, sitting in a pile of her own shit, vomit, and blood, crying, totally smeared in all of it. A few bloody, shitty sticks right beside her. She's just crying with her legs spread and sort of shaking. I ask if she's okay. She says yes. Ask if I can help. She says no. Walk back to camp fucking terrified and guilty. The ranger is in his tent, I guess, because I can't find him around camp. Go into my tent and turn out flashlight. Lie there for a while. Can't sleep. Hear big footsteps walking away from right near my tent. I was near some trees, so I guess he was standing outside of my tent for a while. Don't sleep at all. The next day, eventually find her filtering water. Ask if she's okay. She says she doesn't know what I'm talking about and to go help the others make dinner. The rest of the trip, I literally cannot get within 10 feet of her. She's just always not near me. She and the old ranger dude are really talkative. He's really friendly, compliments my outdoor skills a lot, and etc. Hike out eventually and go to a ranger station slash lodge for a night before driving out. Hike out eventually and go to a ranger station slash lodge for a night before driving out. There's an older woman ranger there. I tell her everything that happened and she seems very concerned and takes my phone number. That night, I go to shower, come back and find my room and all my belongings, totally raided. Say fucking nothing to anyone the whole drive back to boys. This was before Facebook. I've tried to look some of them up since, but only have ever had luck with the intern who I eventually think I found on a USFS website by pure chance when I was researching something totally different. It only had the first name listed, but the face looked right. 